Hey guys, Indy here with Ultimate Tool Reviews. So this is going to be a really basic video. We're just going to be starting at just square one, and we're going to be talking about power drills. Of course, it's probably one of the most basic power tools out there. Uh, probably almost everyone's first pick whenever they need a new power tool, and uh, probably generally most people's first power tool as well. So we're going to just go by a step-by-step. Um, basically, I'm sure you watch this video because maybe you haven't bought a power tool yet, or maybe you just bought one and you want to learn a little bit more before you start using it. So we're going to go through just all the basics. Um, basically, if you've never used a drill before, this is a perfect video for you. Uh, if you already have some experience using drills, probably not the best video for you, but you might still learn a thing or two. So let's get started, guys. Take care. All right, so when we're talking drills, we have a few different options to choose from. Of course, I'm not going to go into anything with corded drills. That's a whole different subject. Um, for the most part, the most common type of drill you can buy is going to be a cordless drill. And what that means is you've got a battery with your drill, um, and it always snaps in below. Um, there's many, many brands to choose from. I'm not going to go into brands at all today. That'd be a whole other video. Um, but I will say, when it comes to brands, I recommend that you pick a brand that has a good warranty and that's decently easy to service or return for you. So, you know, if you got a Lowe's nearby or a Home Depot nearby, uh, whatever one's closest, more convenient to you, which one you shop at more, probably best to buy a brand that they have there in stock. You're going to have an easier time buying more tools in that range, being able to return that tool, and overall getting service will probably be a lot easier. So let's just start off with the basic drills. Um, there's a number of different sizes, number of different types of drills to buy. Uh, but for the most part, we talk about drills. We've got um, this size drill. This is just a Metabo HPT drill. This is in the subcompact size. So what that means is going to be a little bit smaller, but you're trading off size for power then. So a little bit less power, but for the most part, anything you really need to use this drill for, it should work just fine. If we move up in the line a little bit, I've got a Makita here, and this is gonna be a just a regular size drill. Nothing out of the ordinary. Um, it's basically the mid-range in Makita's lineup, and it's gonna be your pretty much standard drill. Um, this is also what's called a hammer drill. So you may not need a hammer drill, but what a hammer drill does is if you're drilling through masonry, which is brick, concrete, anything to do with, think of like rock, um, concrete, pavers, anything like that, it allows you to drill through it a little bit faster. You don't necessarily need a hammer drill function to drill through that, but it makes it a lot easier and a lot less strainful on your hand. Uh, pushing through that on your drill, it overall just overall an easier job, and the drill's actually designed to do that. So it gives an advantage there, um, but most people generally don't need to buy a hammer drill. Um, I use hammer drills once in a while, and it's not even that common. I've gotten away without using a hammer drill a number of times, and I've been just fine. Um, so moving on, um, for the mid-range drills, move up to something a little bit higher end. Uh, this is going to be the Milwaukee Fuel. Um, this is going to be more of your higher end type of drills. You get more power, more durability, more reliability from these types of drills. But they're designed to be used almost every day with pretty heavy abuse. So trading off to that though, you're going to be paying a lot more for these types of drills. Um, something like the Metabo, that's a subcompact drill. It's only about $77 on Amazon for the kit. You get two batteries with it. Whereas something like this is going to run you in the two to $300 range in a kit. So the price point is going to be a lot more, a lot different when it comes to drills. But you wanted to look at what you're using a drill for. If you needed a drill for uh, maybe just using it on the weekend a couple times to hang, say, paintings on the wall, do small DIY projects, maybe small woodworking projects, you can get away with a subcompact drill, no problem. But if you want to use things like spade bits, we'll get into it later, um, larger size drill bits, you want to do a little bit larger projects, you might want to look at going into something of more of the uh, mid-range standard drills like the Makita here. But if you're really a more high-end user, um, might be getting to the trades soon, uh, or you just do a ton of projects around the house, say you're putting in a, a big deck eventually, uh, you're going to be doing, say, a lot of like, um, tap cons, masonry bits, things like that. You might look at getting, getting a pro-grade drill just to make sure that it withstands anything that you throw at it. So that's a few things about the differences between these three drills here. And uh, let's move into some more of the features now. We'll get a little bit closer. All right, so let's get a little bit closer on these drills and let's see what we can find out when it comes to features. Now, um, for the most part, every single drill is going to have at least two, mo two mode speed selection. And what that means is, on top of every drill, you're going to have what's called a, basically this is your gearbox on the drill. So it's going to either say high and low, 
or like the Makita and the Milwaukee here, it's gonna be a one and a two selection. And what that means is basically it's like a gearbox. So when it shows that it's on low, that means it's gonna be in say like gear one. So it'll be a slower speed, but higher torque. So that's gonna be a slower speed, higher torque, put it into high, it's gonna be a higher speed, but lower torque. So some examples of when you would use that are some of the high speeds I like to use for if I'm drilling really small holes. I can drill those holes really fast. I don't need a lot of torque to drill super fast, but it's still gonna be very handy to have because I can do that a lot faster. And if I wanna say put it into a high torque mode, that'd be great for using a spade bit. All right, so I've got three different types of drill bits that you can possibly use with a drill. Of course, there's gonna be a few more, but these are the, gonna be the most basic ones you're gonna find at a hardware store. Um, this is just a standard drill bit in my right hand here. Um, they come in many, many different types of shapes and sizes, um, different types of metal types as well too. So depending on what you're drilling out with, make sure you get the right bit. Um, best always ask someone at the hardware store um, what you're drilling into. Uh, if you're drilling into most wood, uh, drywall to hang a screw, uh, for the most part, any of the drill bits will work for you. However, though, if you're looking to drill into something like masonry or a harder type of metal, you want to look for the, sp the certain types of bits for those. Uh, there's, for certain, there's specific types of bits for everything you can possibly drill into. You want to make sure you're using the right bit. Um, worst case that can happen for the most part is it'll just destroy the bit you're trying to use. Uh, well, let's move into the spade bits. I got one right here. And these are for drilling a little bit larger holes. So for example, let's say you did a punch a little bit larger hole in maybe just like a two by four, you need to run a wire through it. This will be a one inch hole that this will drill for you. Uh, this is a self feeding bit, which means that it's got a little bit of threading here. So once it gets into the wood it's drilling in, you don't need to push on this anymore. It'll actually drill itself into that piece of wood, which is a really, really handy feature to have. Uh, this is called a hole saw bit works very similar to the spade bit, except that it creates what's called a core in the middle here. So when you're drilling out, it makes a lot cleaner of a hole than a spade bit, and it has a little hole, a little core here in the middle. Um, a lot of these times are for use for things like drilling through soft metal, or if you wanna make a really nice clean hole that's gonna be a little bit larger at times than most spade bits. Um, so many different types of you know pros and cons to whatever you're drilling into, but a lot of times it's good to do some more research on those when it comes to different types of drill bits. Don't wanna to get too much on the drill bits right now, I wanna focus entirely on the drills, but just wanna make sure I show the basics here so it's clear what I'm talking about. But let's get back to the drills now. So if we move over to the uh, Makita and the Milwaukee, they're gonna have a one and a two. So if you think about that, like when you're driving your car, uh, think of this as gear one. So gear one, of course, is gonna have the <laughs> lowest speed, but the highest amount of torque. And when you shift into gear two, that's gonna give you a higher speed than gear one, but it's gonna give you a little bit lower torque. So same with the Milwaukee, the exact same way, gear one and gear two. Uh, there are some drills that have different gearing, uh, but for the most part, those are rather uncommon. I've never really seen myself, uh, but for the most part, you generally just have two speeds on most drills. Some other features to look for as well too are gonna to be things like LED lights on your drills. So all these, all three of these drills in front of me have that really nice feature to have if you're working in low lighting. If you're hanging up anything like shelving, that's gonna be, you know, in somewhere where you're gonna be blocking the light, really nice to have an LED light. Also important to notice where the LED lights are on the drill. So this one doesn't have any LED lighting up here by the head. If it's, it's got all of the LED lighting, it's gonna be just down. So if I'm looking where my drill is, if I'm doing anything that's gonna be blocking this light right here, this might not work the best. When it comes to the Makita here, it's got my LED light right underneath the chuck here. So that could be a little more helpful, but it also could be a little bit less helpful if I'm drilling and holding my hand here a lot, if I'm drilling uh, something interesting. Uh, the Milwaukee is just like the Metabo, in the fact that I've got the LED light on the bottom here. Something always important to look for whenever you're drilling anything. Um, is where your LED light is on that drill. So let's move on here to some of the chuck settings. So this is something that a lot of people just ignore on most drills, but it's important to know what, understand what they do. So this is the most basic chuck on here. It's gonna be the Metabo. And what this means is, 
if I say, I'll put a spade bit in here just to demonstrate. All right, so I've got a spade bit in here just to demonstrate, and I got it on uh, chuck setting one. So what that means, or sorry, clutch setting one on the chuck here. And what that means is that if I hold this chuck, if I hold this down there, it's not gonna rotate for me. It's actually just gonna end up stopping. And I can put this on basically full speed. I can hold this spade without much effort there. And what that's useful for is, let's say I am putting some screws in something very fragile. Uh, maybe I'm putting some screws in a, um, I'm fixing like a really fragile piece of furniture. And you don't wanna put that screw in with too much pressure, too much force. You can adjust your, your clutch setting here to make that drill stop turning when you hit a certain level of force. And that's what that, that's what that used for. A lot of people though, they just crank this all the way down to what's called drill mode on here. And pretty much every drill has that. That's just your max clutch setting and that doesn't allow this to slip at all. So this will just keep going until the motor stops going. So important to know what that does. Um, there's many different types of you know clutch settings that can be useful. Uh, best thing to do though is do a little bit of research on what you're, you know, if you're fastening something like uh, some larger screws, smaller screws, depending on what you're doing with it. You may maybe want to adjust that clutch setting just a little bit. But for the most part though, you can generally keep it on just drill mode and be totally fine. But always handy to have that um, knowledge available as well. So if you move on to something like the Makita and the Milwaukee, these are both hammer drills. So they have a few different settings. Um, looking at the Makita here, I've got of course some of the clutch settings just like I do um, with the Matab over there. But I've got three settings on the top as well. So I've got two bands that I can turn. If I turn this into, see there's a little screw here. If I turn the clutch setting now onto one, now the clutch is activated. But if I turn it over to, with the, which is what I call the hammer, now this is just deactivated the clutch. It's on hammer drill mode now. Or if I turn this over to drill mode, it also deactivates the clutch. So the clutch is only active when I'm on that fastening mode with this type of drill. That's important to note um, in case you're trying to use the clutch and you make some settings here, but you're on drill mode instead of the fastening mode. So very important to be aware of wherever you're using these types of drills. And let's go over exactly what hammer drill mode is too while I'm standing here. So if we turn this to hammer mode, I will demonstrate here. We'll put this into speed one. So what hammered mode is, is if you think of a drill, you're gonna want, you wanna drill a hole, and let me grab a drill bit here. You wanna drill a hole into something like a, um, like block maybe on your garage. Um, when you start drilling, of course, the drill is gonna turn your drill bit. Now to drill through masonry, you want a little bit of extra oomph to push to that masonry. So what that hammer drill is gonna do is it's gonna push that bit in this direction. It's gonna, it's gonna hammer that bit in. Think of like hammering like a nail as it's rotating that drill bit. That's what gives a hammer drill that hammer drill name basically. It's hammering that bit for you. Uh, now you don't wanna ever use that when you're doing anything else but using a hammer, hammer basically a masonry bit to drill into masonry. And if you watch really closely, I got this drill, I got this chuck all the way open. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this on real slow. I'm gonna pretend like I'm drilling into masonry and watch the chuck here really closely. See that? That's how it's hammering for you. It's not a lot of action, but it is enough to make that extra difference when you're punching through something like masonry, brick, or concrete. It's gonna give you all the difference there. Um, allow you to go a little bit faster with a little bit more speed. So really nice to understand how that hammer drill function works. If you look at the Milwaukee, we have the same features as well. Um, I've got basically the regular drill mode here. I've got hammer drill mode, and then I've got all my fastening settings with the clutch. So a little bit different, but for the most part, every kind of drill has about the same settings, depending on which ones you buy, and they're all pretty easy to figure out and to use. Now, let's move into some of the battery technology. Of course, when you buy a drill, um, you want to, the first thing you want to do when you pull the drill out of the box is you want to plug in that battery into the charger. So if we look at the um, battery in the Makita here, it's fully charged. And when you pull a Makita battery out of the box, they're gonna be maybe be just one bar or no bars on these batteries. So first thing you always wanna do whenever you get a new power tool is plug in that battery and get that battery charged right up. Uh, depending on the drill you buy, you might be something like this Metabo, and there's gonna be no um, battery gauge on here. They're called fuel gauges by a lot of people, but there's no battery gauge on here. 
So it's kind of hard to tell exactly where you're at, but you can always find out quickly by just slapping on the charger. And if it charges it, well, it's probably not full. So that's an easy way to find out. Now we're looking at batteries. You're gonna obviously of course see a few things. You're gonna see the brand on the Mctable HPT. You'll see the voltage, 18 volt. You see the type, lithium ion, which is pretty much the only type of battery used now. And you'll also find on a lot of batteries, um, the amount of charge or sorry, they basically the battery size. Uh, those are measured in amp hours. And right here, a little bit harder to find on this one, it's 18 volt at 1.5 amp hour for a total of 27 watt hours. And basically what that means is gonna be 1.5 amp hour. You think about that as like the size of a fuel tank in a car. The greater the fuel tank size, the longer you're gonna be able to use that car for before having to recharge it or get more fuel. So. If we look at the Makita here, I've got a five amp hour battery and same thing with the Milwaukee, a five amp hour battery. Um, so you'll trade off a little bit when you have a larger battery, you're gonna have more size and greater weight. So if you look at this 1.5 amp hour battery, 18 volt, also the Makita is an 18 volt battery as well too. You will trade off size and weight for a great bigger battery. So of course, if you wanna understand what you're doing, um, are you going to be using the drill above your head a lot? Um, do you want to be using a drill that will last a bit longer? Um, how, what size projects are you doing? Are you doing really big projects? Or do you have two batteries and could possibly swap out in between, in between the projects and be able to charge that battery? Something always good to consider is what size batteries you have as well. So it's very important to understand the battery sizes. Um, for the most part, it doesn't really matter too much about the voltages because batteries only work on certain tools. So if it doesn't slide and lock in, yeah, it doesn't work on that tool anyway. So that's pretty simple when it comes to voltages, but all they really understand when it comes to batteries is going to be the amp hour, which is basically just your like fuel tank size of that battery. So pretty interesting with batteries there. All right, so I've got the Metabo drill here. Uh, I've got just a piece of wood that I'll use to demonstrate, and I'll just throw this drill bit in here, for, just in here, just to show you how it works. So, what you want to do is you want to have that drill bit in there, and here's a little trick that I like to use whenever I'm using a drill bit. So, let's say that I am pre-drilling a hole for a screw. So, let me grab a screw here. All right, guys, so I got a piece of wood here. Let's say that I wanna put in this screw into this piece of wood. Now, of course, it's always a good idea to pre-drill your hole before you put the screw in. Of course, that'll prevent things like cracking or splitting of the wood. So what I like to do for finding out a, basically a drill bit that I need is I like to take the screw and I like to hold it just like this and I will pick a drill, or I'll pick a drill bit that is gonna be just shorter than that. So this one might be a little bit too big, but if, let me zoom in here a little bit. If we take that, we just set these two screws down, that drill bit might be a little bit too big for that screw. Because what you wanna do is you wanna be able to drill a hole that is gonna be just big enough for basically the center of that fastener to go through, but still let it grip on those threads on that material. So let's pick a little bit smaller drill bit here all right, there we go. That should work just fine. See how that drill bit is just a bit smaller than that screw? That'll work perfect. So let's put this in the drill. Now, one thing I like to do a lot, whenever I'm putting a putting a screw in, well, you wanna pre-drill that hole just enough for, that, for whatever fastener you're using, like the screw. And what I like to do is never drill farther than I have to. Um, of course, you don't want to hit anything else in the wall if you're drilling into a wall. But what I like to do is adjust my drill bit just enough, if I've got enough size in the drill bit, to give me about the same length as that screw. So I know that when I go to, when I hit the uh, part of my chuck here, that I'm as far in as I need to go. So that's about good right there, uh, about as far as I can get with this uh, drill bit here. So I'm just going to tighten it up there, and now that I know, when I get into the uh, material and it stops there, that's as far as my screw's gonna go in as well too. So for this type of drill bit, I'm gonna put my chuck, I'm sorry, I'm gonna put my clutch or my transmission, my gearbox here in too high, and I'm gonna be able to just drill in there quite quickly.
All right, and if you notice there, when I was drilling, it kind of started to stop when my drill bit hit about there. What that means is when I'm drilling, I get to about there when it starts stopping, it means that my drill bit is now kind of clogged with all the material that I'm drilling. So what you can do is you can just hold it, hold your drill down and pull it out and I can clear all those chips out and I can continue drilling. And there we go. So that will allow me to make a nice clean hole to put that fastener in. Now let's put that fastener in. All right, so when you're using drill bits, of course, you want to be you want to understand the sizes, but now that I'm putting a fastener in, you want to have the right bit for the right type of screw. So majority of screws you're probably going to end up using are probably going to be a Phillips number two head. Very, very common. Um, a lot of screws use these. I've got a Phillips number two bit right here, and uh, this is exactly what I need to drill this screw. But let me show you um, a few different types here. You can, of course, buy one of these kits. Um, Lowe's, Home Depot has plenty of them to choose from. Um, many different types of many different types of bits to have to choose from, and you're going to see many different types of options. Um, now, when it comes to bits, uh, Phillips two is going to be the most common, but make sure you choose the right size for your right size fasteners you're using, of course. So always keep that in mind. Um, you don't want to use like a uh, Phillips one on a Phillips two screw. You want to avoid stripping screws as well, because if you strip the screw, it's going to be really hard to get that out of uh, wherever you're putting it into later on. So always keep that in mind whenever you're putting in screws. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this in the drill and uh, let's put this in the uh, wood now. All right, so before I put this screw in, I wanna turn my transmission here from high to low, because if I put it into high speed, it's just gonna whip that screw in as fast as it can, but it's not gonna have a lot of torque, and it's also gonna give me less control of how fast I'm putting that in there. So I've got that now into low speed, high torque mode, and let's put it in there. All right, that worked out pretty good. Um, it wasn't too, too much speed that I couldn't control it. Had just enough power to get that screw in there quite nicely. That's what you wanna do. You wanna make sure that you stay safe and that you're understanding your tools very well. So, all right guys, well I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, just basic drill um, understanding and different types of drills to buy. Um, like I said before in the video, uh, I would say just don't worry about brand too much if you're buying your first few couple power tools. Uh, many, many brands to choose from, but I recommend going for a brand that is something that is at somewhere you shop frequently. So if you want to expand in that line of tools more, um, you definitely can in the future. You've got access to it. And then um, it's also got easier returns if you need to get warranty done on it as well too to help you out with that a lot in the future. So leave a comment below, guys. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those in the, in the comments below. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Take care.